was so bad. Hey everybody, just a short, simple video today. It's just this dead fur. So they tied a swing set up here. I don't know if you can see this very well or not, but they tied a chain to these two fir trees and this one died and this one didn't um, many years ago, but there's a swing set and they were like, uh, you know, we'd really like to keep the swing set. They say it's been dead four or five years. They're not totally sure. You know, can you climb it? Can you preserve the swing set? And this was actually like exactly, for me, it was like 50-50. Like, man, can I climb that? That's pretty crusty. You know, you can see there are no needles left on the branches. They're just, you know, skeleton branches. We can fall the tree that way, but there are fences over there. We'll demolish the fences, you know? So I told the guy, you know, yikes. Uh, well, and also we've got house, garage, another garage or uh, there are three buildings back there so obviously it can't go that way anyways i was telling him you know I'll, I'll tell you what i'll try to go up it and get it done we'll see if if it's too uncomfortable for me i'm gonna come down and we're just gonna fall this thing from the ground and it's gonna destroy everything it, it hits and so they're totally understanding about that so i am gonna climb up there see how it feels because it's right on the border of like is this still sound enough to climb but i'll know once i go up there because i'll be able to tell you know how deep are my spurs sinking how much is the top wiggling i've also got to be careful because there are other trees around when i take this top potentially I could bust off a bunch of branches, have a bunch of shrapnel come back and hit me. So it's kind of right on the borderline. I think it's still climbable. It's a fur, so it's a pretty hardy species. It's also straight, which is nice. Um, you know, obviously when they lean hard, you gotta think like the, the roots are also decayed and you're putting all that torsion on the tip. The straight tree, I'm a lot more comfortable climbing it. So I think this tree's okay. We're gonna climb it and see how it feels. And I took my 20 inch bar off of this saw because I had a maple I was doing yesterday where I was like cutting. There's that one with all the cookies, you know? And uh, it's like I knew I had to make a lot of cuts. I was like, I think this bar will be better. And it was. And now, I actually wish I had that 20 inch bar because like, it might take a pretty big top out of this. I've got my 14 on it. I don't know. This 3 8 chain, I can get it much sharper than I can the quarter pitch. But the quarter pitch, it's like so much less resistant because the teeth are so much smaller that it actually cuts pretty good. I just can't decide which one I like better. But for this, I, I do wish I had that 20 inch bar. See, already I can just, I can just hear the bark. I don't know if you can tell, but I can just hear like, this bark is separating from the wood on the inside and I can see it sounds different. This thing's been dead for a while. It doesn't sound good. These are the long spurs. Look at that. They're, oh, by the way, $20 off JK boots. <laughs> Bro, it could treason. <laughs> but look at, look at my spur sunk all the way to the shank or whatever this is called. But my gaff is, I think it's four inches long. It's the long one. It's all the way in there. So this isn't feeling very good so far. I'm only 20 feet up. Maybe it gets better up here. <laughs> oh, whoa, what do we got here? Oh my goodness. This is actually pretty rare for a fur. They're like hollow like that it's really bad oh oh that's see there's a solid chunk see the difference solid not solid let's go a little higher see <laughs> it gets better okay so see right here we've got this is what killed the tree so the chain girdles the tree the tree only look at how much that branch is wiggling this tree's bad so what happens is the tree the heartwood the, the, the tree only transports nutrients on the very outermost layer of wood the inside of the tree is actually kind of just there for structural integrity it's not transporting nutrients up and down it's just the outside layer so when you girdle the tree like this you constrict it you could see, uh it, it chokes off it's like choking off the vascular system of the tree you know so even though this isn't touching the inside of the tree well not the inside of the tree is not doing anything all the action's happening on the outside so it chokes the tree and that's why this thing's dead wow okay i don't know if you're gonna see this so i'm just gonna shake my body see if this thing jiggles yeah look at that so i got like 80 feet above me. I can jiggle the top just by, it's too dangerous. It's just too dangerous. I gotta, I, I can't do it. I can't, cause I climb up there. So here's the other issue. I can't, if I climb too high, I could break the wood out, right? Cause it's too brittle. But if I cut it here, 
I'm putting all the weight of that tree up there is pushing on the stem where I make my cut. The most dangerous spot to cut a dead tree like this is in the middle because I'm putting all this force on a rotten stump. And as this big old top goes over, it's pushing as the face cut closes. It's pushing backwards on the thing I'm standing on. So this would be a really dangerous spot to make the cut. This is where I'd have to make the cut though. And you know, nobody wants to tell the customer I can't do something, but that's what I'm gonna do. It's too sketchy. I can't go any higher. I mean, you hear that? It's crazy. Yeah. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, you know, but. No, no, no. Like we said, you're the decider. Yeah, when you see stuff like that, that's like. I'm not surprised at the decision. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. So yeah, sometimes, you know what, it's just, it's just not worth, it's really just not worth it. I mean, I have to climb past all this and this is a, it's no good. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> Who knows what's in there? Um, It's bad. It's really bad. The fact that I can like jiggle this tree with just the slightest movement, you know? I mean, you probably can't see it in the video. I like barely move and that all, everything jiggles up there. It's no good. And so, yeah, it doesn't feel good to say, hey, yeah, I can't do this, but that's just the way it is, you know? It's just too, it's just too freaking dangerous. Um, so either I gotta just demolish everything over there, or we need to, it needs like a crane or something else to tie into, you know? Those trees, you know, I can already imagine people saying, why don't you tie into those trees? These trees are shorter than this one. It's just not worth it. Yeah, I can tie into those. I mean, if this thing breaks when I'm standing up here, though, it's still gonna be violent. I could be very seriously injured or killed, even tied into those trees. You know, maybe make like a suspension thingy, like tying a rope to that tree, tying a rope to this tree, but then this tree takes all day, you know, and it's like, it's, and it's still dangerous. So, I just don't want to do it, you know? I just don't like the idea of, you want to be the guy that can get stuff done, but I, I don't want to be the guy that gets hurt just because I'm too prideful to say, you know, I, I can't do that. I want to see what the inside looks like. so bad oh that's so horrible oh man get me out of here should have done this at the bottom oh man why is this tree standing dude this chain might be keeping this tree up like not right now but i'm saying like when the wind blows wow that's so bad oh i almost didn't bring my gopro with me i'm glad i did this is really really bad That was a first for me. Never used one of these in a tree before. So uh, this tree's totally straight. I can probably just wedge it over, but um, it might get lodged in all this crap. And the the wood is probably not strong enough to even like hold on the, um, to even hold on the, what am I trying to say? The, the wedges might not actually lift the tree. It might be too punky. So I am gonna put a rope in this thing. I'm gonna climb a little higher just to put the rope up there. It's really, you know, the, your body weight up here is one thing, but the force is a whole other thing once you start cutting, you know. Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. I know I keep saying that, but it really is. But I definitely want the rope in there. Maybe I should just shoot a line. I am going to shoot a line. I'm going to shoot a line in this thing. I'm not going to climb any higher. I don't know. I've never seen a fur this decayed that still had its bark on it. Usually the bark all sloughs off, you know. But I, re I really thought that I'd be able to, like, get up there, but... It, it really doesn't look that bad from down here. I just want to see what this thing feels like down here. See that? That's good. See that light color? Yeah, there's solid wood down here. So that that's a really that's a relief. <laughs> Never seen a fur like it does not look that bad from here. I really thought, yeah, it's still climbable, but you'd have to be insane. You would literally have to be insane to climb that thing so here's my big shot i'm gonna shoot a line up there i made this like trigger thing Wesper sells this like trigger thing and i just used a little piece of rope pulley to break the press stick and a press stick to hold the 
progress and they sell this little trigger thing. I had another section of pull. I can actually get even more um, out of it. But this is the trigger that I sort of came up with. Um, I think they just sell this. They didn't sell like a kit or anything. You just, but it's literally just a short piece of rope, dog leash snap thingy. This short prusik here, prusik here, pulley here. It's like a gas station carabiner. And then when you pull on this little guy, it releases this trigger. Okay, I'm gonna shoot a line up there. So it's like, I, I, I wanna get the rope as high as I can for as much leverage as possible, but I also don't wanna get too high. I'll just bust the top out. I really wish, you know, man, I was right there. It sucks because I, I really like to, I prefer to just like actually be up there and physically tie the rope around the tree. Right now I'm gonna shoot a rope up and over the branches and tie it at the base, you know, and pull it. So the rope will be up there, but I'll be resting on a branch collar, hopefully right next to the trunk. I'd like to just actually tie it right around the tree. And I was so close, but I was like, man, I was just looking at that wood, I was like, ugh. I'm gonna come down and set the rope from the ground, even though this tree is a little less dead, I would've liked to just climb up there and actually tie the rope around. I'd feel a lot more secure about that, but I really didn't want to climb any higher than that thing. So we're gonna set it from the ground. I am really happy that I just bored in here, you know, 14 inches and hit solid wood. That makes me feel a lot better. At least I got one thing working for me here. I mean, this, there's not a whole lot working here. Like I have to destroy. <laughs> <laughs> gonna destroy this guy's property, but it's better than destroying the house and it's cheaper to fix You know this I mean, you know it's, it's cheaper to fix the fence than to get like if I got like a even a 76 foot bucket in here I'd be halfway up the tree. It wouldn't even be safe. You'd have to get a big crane in here This is the safest way to do it He's gonna have to fix the fence, but it's cheaper than getting a crane. This is a 16 ounce um, You know, maybe I'll do a smaller weight. I'll get more height out of a lighter ball I have two throw lines because I always get, <laughs> often get one stuck. Yeah, this one's a 12 ounce. I'm gonna use this one instead. See, the the lighter the throw weight, the higher it goes, but also the harder it is to get down um, the tree because the weight of this. This is a 16 ounce and this is a 12 ounce, so this is easier to get the ball back down to the ground, especially with rough abrasive bark. This one, you get more height. This tree is really tall, so I'm gonna go with the 12 ounce. <sighs> my, my heart, my... My heart's like racing from this tree. Look. Ugh, all the way down. Man. So I've got to try to get it as close to the trunk as possible. Might take me a few shots. Usually does. I'm on the wrong side of the trunk. I want to be on the other side. Okay, things are dangerous when they come down. I actually really like the height I got with that, but I just need to be on the left side of the trunk. It just looks better. I like the trigger because you can like, you got more time to sort of relax with your shot. You know, you're not like straining, trying to hold. That one didn't even go over. <laughs> straight up in the air and straight back down. It didn't even go over any branches. This tree's gotta be pushing at least 140 feet tall. I mean, this is, that's, that's a tall tree. It's probably 150 feet tall, honestly. So I'm trying to get this at least 100 feet up. Yeah, about, about two thirds to three quarters of the way. That way I've got good leverage, but I'm also still on somewhat beefy wood. All right. One, two, three. Oh, I think I got it. Oh, please go to the ground. Oh, see, I got a good shot. I just need to get the ball to the ground. It just, that bark is just rough. It just doesn't want to slide down it. <sighs> All right. Come on, baby. Oh, maybe. No. See, I'm not over the, uh, on the right side of the tree. All right. What do they say? Fifth time's a charm. <laughs> Climb this sketchy tree and almost take myself out with <laughs> throw ball. I hit the trunk. I hit the trunk and so it just bounced back off. These throw balls are dangerous, dude. Okay, come on, baby. Let's go. Oh, oh, I wasn't, dude. I, I didn't even mean to shoot that. Gotta be kidding me. All right, come on. Come on. Oh man, are you kidding me? See, if this were a green tree, I'd use that shot, but I'm like two feet out on the branches. They're just gonna break. 
it's just too risky i have to get a good rope set in this thing it's just too risky with the three freaking houses try it without the trigger maybe i don't know <laughs> let's see let's see what happens Why won't it come down? I don't know what to do. It's not coming down. This is so frustrating. It's my heaviest weight. It's just not coming down. So the bark is just so grabby. I have to, I have to have the momentum of the shot. It has to get the ball to the ground. I can't like really manipulate it, you know? I have to just shoot it and just not touch the rope. It has to go all the way to the ground. All right, here we go. My GoPro died. I think I got the shot. My GoPro died. Okay, I think I got it. I didn't get it quite as high as I wanted, but I'm gonna at least pull the rope up and see how it looks. I think it might be good enough. I hope so, man. I'm really tired of shooting this thing. Ugh. Yeah, I'm about a foot away from the trunk. I just, I just want to go over a little bit. I should have tied the, the this end on this side because I could have just tied this around the base. But now I've. <laughs> Uh, cause we're pulling this end, I gotta pull 300 feet of rope up and over. But I'm gonna try to get a little closer to the trunk. Alright, the rope set. You'd think getting the rope set would be a relief, but it just means I'm closer to making this cut. So it <laughs> just makes me a little more nervous. Oh my goodness, that tree moves so much. The rope's halfway up, I'm barely gonna pull on it, see if you can see. Look at, oh my goodness, you probably can't see it, dude, it moves. Oh man, it moves a lot. Oh my goodness, that tree's so decayed. It means that the rope is going to help a lot just pull it over, which is good, but it also means that that thing, that wood is bad in there. Dude, I'm nervous. I don't, I'm not like trying to play this up for YouTube or anything. I'm like seriously nervous about this, you know? It's just the nature of tree work, man. It's just so, the, the stakes are so high, like it's just destroy the house, you know what I mean? Those three buildings, it's like, I think two houses and one garage. It's intense, dude, which is what I love about it, but it's also what's like, I don't know. It is what I love about it, honestly. It gets the blood pumping, you feel alive, but it's, it's really scary. Yeah, and I promise I'm not even like exaggerating just because I'm filming it or nothing. I'm scared of this tree, you know? I'm not scared of getting hurt. I'm a little nervous about like branches breaking and stuff when I pull up it. I'm terrified of the tree going the wrong direction, you know? It's like you only have so much control when the trees are dead and crunchy. Just laid all my rope in horse poop. <laughs> I wasn't even looking at the ground. <laughs> it's just laying across a bunch of horse turds. We're uh, about ready to start cutting. Got the rope set. We're gonna prune this vine maple back. It's better to just prune it now because inevitably I'm gonna damage it. It's better to prune it and have a clean cut than hit it and peel it all out, you know? <laughs> Some fine pruning there. That'll, yeah, that'll be, I'm glad we did that. All right, this tree is so dangerous, so hazardous, and I'm gonna fall it right after this message from our sponsor. Are you worried about inflation? Because my friends over at Birch Gold, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding, no, I'll cut it. <laughs> good i'm just making sure that i'm lined up here but i'm going to come back and when i'm cutting i'm going to be looking down my sight i'm going to try to cut as straight as possible not rocking the saw back and forth just to try to get my sight aimed right in the same spot where that rope is and i'm just going to cut straight to try to keep the hinge wood consistent <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Okay, um... Okay, yeah, see how easy that bounces off? That means I've got resistance now, like... Cut a little more. <laughs> Trying to fortify this as much as possible. Oh man. Whew. Yeah, so I'm watching the movement. I'm also I keep I look up after every bang to make sure no limbs are coming back down at me. Alright, Dean, start to just pull a little bit. I think you should just uh, you you should just go for it. I think it's gonna break. I think we got it. I think it's the moment of truth. Just kind of steadily start driving forward. Go go go. Yeah, we got it. Woo! Oh man, am I glad that's over. Look at that tree! Whoa! Oh man! It's I just can't believe this. I cannot believe this thing still had bark on it. Wow! No, oh, nothing's damaged. No way! <laughs> oh man! I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Look at. Nothing's damaged. I think you're about two inches too far. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Dean. <laughs> I can't believe that. Oh, that is such a relief. What a rush. Yeah, look at that. This thing was all. Uh, <laughs> look, look at where the, the bend in the hill is. Like the bark just went flying up. I mean, tree's so decayed. I've never seen a tree this rotten that didn't look that rotten from a distance. It really didn't look that bad from the ground. Yeah, just in the very center, a little bit of solid wood. My heart's pounding. I mean, that was the goal, you know, but but it was such a tight shot. I was like, I didn't think, yeah, I thought there'd be damage. Yeah. So it really didn't take that much to lift because of the tractor, but you know, I started with this one because I wanted to get it in, but I didn't want to hit my bar. And then I got this one in, which it did hit my bar a little bit. I had to pull my saw out and cut the tip of this off to get back in there and then got my room switched to the 12 inches and it wasn't like about lifting it super high like this will obviously give you more lift stacking it but it was more like trying to keep the tree supported as it went over and once it started to I didn't get any movement with this wedge here's where the, the green wood starts I didn't feel any with this one either but when I got this one in I got to about here thunk, thunk, I started feeling it grabbing the tree and this one was grabbing pretty good too but it was just trying to keep it stable until look at this is old branch right here but the ones that started to move in the right direction and i felt good about the hinge i said just go for it and the tractor pulled it over man that was that was intense yeah and see i was you know like i said i was looking at my sights and i was cutting up the hinge wood i'm pretty happy with how consistent that is from the second i stuck my spur into that thing i was like oh man <laughs> look it like decayed from the outside in so that makes sense right because yeah. it was girdled so it makes sense the sapwood died first and the so hardwood. I might actually get some wood Yeah, out of this that's for like myself. pretty good stuff. Obviously, this is punk. Yeah, see, that's weird. Kind of solid on the inside. Down here, up there, there was, is not whatsoever. You saw that thing just blow up into a billion pieces up there. But that's why when I came down, I bored in. And I when I got these like a bright colored chips, you know, um, I knew there was solid wood in there. So I was like, uh, but, you know, it felt relief when I bored in and got some nice looking chips i think they're green i'm colorblind i get green and brown mixed up but i think they're green um but anyways i could just tell they're lighter colored so and then yeah about a third of the way pretty thick hinge the thicker the better in this case right like if it were green i could cut a really small if this were a green tree he wouldn't have been able to pull that over with that much hinge you know it would have held on um and i would have cut more hinge but because it's dead the wood is weaker so i leave more wood for more control and once i felt like i got it with the wedges holding it in place and it was moving the rope was really just like holding the tree in place right while i'm doing all my stuff and then when i feel like i've got the tree where i want it and i feel like i'm in control i say okay go for it i feel like my hinge is good but you can't see inside the tree you gotta guess i feel like my hinge is good 
my wedges are grabbing wood. There's solid wood in there. I've got directional control. So yeah, just, just go for it. Oh, and Gordy's calling me. So glad that's over. That I was, I, I was, I was scared of that one. I mean, just, just the obstacles around it, you know. And you don't have X-ray vision. You don't know what the tree looks like on the inside when you're cutting it. I just love this stuff. I just wouldn't want to do anything else for a living. I just, it just, it never gets old. All right, tree number two today. It's just like a big cedar. It's got some barbed wire growing in it. Got to get rid of that. But uh, you can see it's got a big dead top in it. This tree started dying from the top down. Uh, got some power lines right here. Ordinarily, I'd be a little nervous about a tree like this, but after the last one, this <laughs> this one's like no problem. Um, but same thing is probably gonna damage the fence coming down. I don't really want to climb it and piece it out. Get dead top power lines, everything. So just gonna notch and drop it with some wedges. Should go pretty good. conventional on this one instead of Humboldt just because there's more flare down here I thought it would be easier to line everything up and then I just kept taking I was like way short with my bar and I just just kept taking slivers off until I was lined up it, it took me a while it took me like 15 minutes not that proud of this one but I think it's okay now I have it pretty clean it's actually a huge tree that's a 36 inch bar so this is actually like a really big tree Just barely snaked through there. We missed the posts. That hit the ground hard, man. That's a big shear. The wood's pretty good at the bottom, but not right there. That's awesome. Oh, it didn't hit either one. Didn't get this one either. Nice. Man, perfect. Thank you. Hit that right between these two. Man, that feels good. Two successful big drops today. That was a good day. <laughs> 